Hello everybody, Robin here at Toadstool Tarot. And I'm back with a second look at a deck I previously did a walkthrough of. I have a little more information now. And this very peculiar deck, as you've seen on my channel, I've done a full walkthrough. I've lived with it for about a month and I have more information to share now than I did before. This deck I fell in love with when I found it on Etsy. It's under mysterious various names. None of them are very specific, but the first one listed is uh, the Vintage Tarot. It appears that all the information was sourced from um, out of copyright uh, material, old antique illustration. And uh, after I had done a walkthrough, a friend of mine contacted me and said, oh, that's an AI deck, artificial intelligence created art. Now that bothered me at first, uh, since reconciled myself to it, I don't believe the source material was co-opted from any living artist. It looks like vintage out of copyright uh, uh, art. The style is antique looking, but also it varies from card to card as if it was culled from several different historic art sources. And it has the feel of both a um, an RWS deck and a Marseille type deck or Italian uh, traditional deck. Anyway, I love these cards and I've lived with them for about a month and I've discovered a few interesting things about it. Uh, what, as was pointed out to me, uh, one of the reasons uh, this was spotted as an AI deck, which I hadn't spotted it that way because it doesn't look to me like the typical AI deck. It doesn't have smushing and stretching and, you know, weird uh, distorted images like you usually see, like with a brush stroke that's been dragged or something. I do have other decks like that. But it does have very odd, peculiar artifacts in some of the imagery. And uh, that is something that I've gotten used to and at first sort of bothered me. But the more I've gotten used to it, the more intrigued I am by it. Because AI is a new language for me to learn. I don't think it fully understands itself yet in terms of how to interpret human communication or how to communicate it. And it translates things into strange shapes and symbols to try to make some kind of connection with us as we interpret them. Um, and I'm mindful of images that we look at and try to make sense of when there is none there to be made, as in the phenomena called pareidolia, per, uh, for example, cloud gazing, where you see pictures in the sky, etc. But this one, after using it and looking at cards, and for the most part, thinking I saw what I saw, I am now discovering things buried in the images that I didn't see because the mind plays tricks and makes assumptions and fills in gaps. And this makes me think of this deck in the way of a dream deck or a hallucinatory uh, experience via drug-induced uh, hallucinations or something. Or um, there's, there's this theory that we live in a matrix of sorts, that we live in an artificial realm that is digital, and every once in a while there's a glitch in the matrix where out of the corner of our eyes we spot something that doesn't belong in our reality. 
and sometimes these are time slips, sometimes these are strange uh, personages, uh, different objects, um, sometimes we just feel like we see things that aren't there, or we think things are there and they're not. Maybe it's a dimensional slip, who knows? But that's what I like about this deck. I feel like I'm experiencing some of that with these images. So let's have a look at some of the cards I pulled that seem, you know, easy to read at first, but then the more you look, the more you see. For instance, what do you see here in this Knight of Swords? Spot anything interesting? I'll give you five seconds. Four, three, two, one. Had you noticed that this horse only has three legs? From the stance of the horse, we just, uh, and having seen uh, knights in, in tarot decks, we just assume that the horse has four legs. But if you look, there's only one leg in the front. Our mind seems to fill in the rest. Here we have the Page of Swords. And if you notice on this one, this one's not as odd, but it's still odd. He's holding this sword backwards. I suppose as if admiring it, but not in a safe manner. He's holding it by the blade rather than the handle, unless that's the blade and this is the handle, in which case everything's out of proportion. Here we have the fool, and you notice the fool has something very peculiar going on with his legs. This leg, the left leg, seems to be behind or across the right leg. It also seems to be shorter. Shorter would be a foreshortened leg in the foreground, but this one's in the background. And the longer leg is crossed over into the foreground. How odd. Here we have the Queen of Cups with strange little imp-like figures in the bottom and strange flying or floating objects in the sky. It also appears that this arm is perhaps longer than this arm. And it looks like her two knees are over here. Whereas, what is this down here? Another knee? Here we have the Queen of Pentacles with odd star information in this disc here. Strange sort of alien-esque floating cacti type things here. Various other weird images floating in the sky. Here in the Ace of Wands, it looks like this wand isn't actually being held, but is just sort of floating and barely touched by the thumb and finger in that hand. Here we have a devil with, we don't know what devils actually look like, so a devil could look like this. Strange distorted imagery in the wings and features. We have down here another imp-like figure with distorted limbs and just strange shapes. I can't tell if there's a tail or a third leg down here, no face. Very unusual. Here we have the Page of Pentacles, 
and he is holding something in his hand we know not what. Is it a purse with a strap? Of, uh, you could see the sky right through it if it was. Looks like there's a reflection on it. Doesn't quite look like a lantern uh, or a globe. We don't know what it is. It's just some sort of curiosity. He's also got something in his hand down here that we don't know what that is. A bundle of some unrecognizable thing like fringe or rope or something. Here we have the Six of Swords. No sword, but the father or leader is standing in the boat wearing knee socks, I think, maybe boots, and carrying what seems to be a ladle rather than a paddle and a riding crop, which I don't know how those will help him move forward also we see the boat is already tied to land here we see in the six of wands a man riding a horse the horse's front leg is peculiar doesn't seem to have a hoof it seems to be missing part of the ankle and foot on that leg. He's also carrying, I don't know what, a piece of incense, stick of incense that's burning. Who knows? Here we have the Eight of Pentacles, a craftsman working at his desk. But the desk is oddly at an angle sideways rather than facing him. But more interesting is we have what seemed to be maybe a floating or hanging object very peculiar looking things coming from the ceiling what is that an inverted candlestick a tongue who knows here we have the king of pentacles standing on a mountain of coins and he seems to have a sword here which his hand is poised to rest upon, but there's at least a foot distance between his hand and that sword. So either that sword is stuck in there or it's just standing of its own accord. Also, I don't know what he's got in his hand here or here. This could be a glove, but it's got no fingers or features. What is this? It could be a baguette. I mean, I don't know. It's a peculiar shape. Here we have Justice. At first look, it seems like a typical Justice card, but if you look closer, what are is happening with these scales? They're not really scales. They're rings that may support a pan for a scale. They seem to be defying gravity, whereas there are two strands on one side and none on the third side, balancing it. And she's holding this by these chains, which means this section above should collapse onto her hand, not stand upright. Very peculiar defiance of gravity. Also, it looks like this hand might be backwards. Looks like her thumb is on the underside with the small finger in front. There are also what one initially might take as eagles, but if you look closer, I think they're griffins or some sort of mythological beast. Here we have the world. And in the world, we see a very pretty figure. But this hand is backwards. Look at the thumb on the top. Very peculiar. Here we have three of pentacles. And we have a man holding what appears to be an open book. Yet it seems like an odd binding that appears here as one book, 
And here is another book. What book opens to a double binding in three directions? Here we have the Seven of Wands. Notice there's some peculiar fighting or arguing with these wands. This one just it looks like a bit of a blade balanced on end on the table. I don't know what that is. Another blade here. I can't tell what this, this guy is holding. This guy may be holding something in front. But look at this odd piece of a hat back here. It doesn't seem to be on his head. It's just floating in the background. Some strange partial hat anomaly. Here we have the King of Swords seated holding a sword that looks almost more like a crowbar with a hooked end. Or if this is the handle, this is the blade of the sword, which is very peculiar for a sword to have such a lengthy handle and a short blade. Here in the Five of Wands, we have a typical battle scene, which you might not notice at first, anything other than a little bit of a fight or a battle. But when you look, this man seems to have three arms. This one seems to be missing his second arm. And this one seems to be missing a hand on this arm. Very odd. Here in the death card, I guess we can make out the eyes of the skull are up here. Perhaps these are cheekbones, not eyes down here. It's a little hard to read. You also notice we don't have a, we have a very long neck vertebrae here. And there seems to be flesh on the bones, which uh, that could be in a skeleton. But what is it holding? It should be holding some sort of blade, a scythe or something, but it doesn't quite look like a scythe. It, it's almost bending with the breeze, like a feather or a bit of smoke or um, something. I don't, I don't know what that is. It doesn't look like a weapon exactly. Here we have the Knight of Cups, and not much unusual in here. It looks like maybe this, this blade or whatever doesn't match up, and it looks like it's going through his head rather than behind it. But also, look, what is he sitting on? If he's sitting on a saddle it's very high in the air it looks like a pill pillow or a saddle here he's not fully standing i suppose he could be standing and gallop with part of his clothing draping but that looks very peculiar we also have some decoration in the sky here which does not appear natural here we have the Knight of Wands and a very limp wand. Also, the strap on the saddle is not securely fastened around this horse. Here we have the Hanged Man. Now, I had been of... Uh, Ben Ryan channel on my channel and he has this deck and we both went through it. We didn't go through the whole thing. I would like to do that again because his version of the deck has a different fool with the tree and building on opposite sides and the design of the fool quite different. Mine looks like it's sort of bound at the waist as, lit, as if he's had his drawers pulled down sort of cinching his legs in, very odd. And he seems to be like a puppet hanging by the top 
of his hat from the vine. <laughs> Here's an odd one. Ten of swords. No swords. I went back to the Etsy site and they show about five cards on the, on the advertisement page. And their picture of the Ten of Swords does show ten swords coming out of the back of this figure. Which intrigues me all the more. It's like, why was the, the hangman different in Ben's deck than mine? Why is the Ten of Swords different in mine than the one advertised online? How many possible versions of this deck are out there? This could become a collectible uh, item just for the fun of it to see how many differences there are in the cards and various decks. If that kind of thing bothers you, then this deck is obviously not for you. But it really intrigues me, and I'm almost tempted to buy another copy just to compare. Here we have the Ten of Pentacles with a family at work processing something. I don't know what this child is doing on the roof, processing or playing with weird shaped things that looked like rabbits or squirrels or camels, strange kind of U-shaped animal-esque figures. Are they being washed or cooked in a tub? Why on the roof? Very peculiar. I still think, despite all these oddities, this deck can be read because if you know the tarot system, the cards are clearly labeled, and so all the cards can be read. However, the peculiar anomalies do add extra layers into your intuitive interpretations. Here on the page of wands, um, this wand is very peculiar. It looks here a bit like a mop, and I don't know what it is here going off the edge of the card. And here we have the Three of Swords, which was sort of obvious at first that this doesn't look like Three Swords to me. Uh, it still conveys a similar idea, but just very peculiar shapes around the heart-shaped figure and three sort of, three or four <laughs> sword-like images. Anyway, I just wanted to share this with you. Again, it's some kind, sometimes called the Vintage Tarot. It's on Etsy. It does appear to be an AI deck, although it's not described that way in the details. And I do believe, even though I'm more acclimatizing myself to the nature of AI decks and their very special language, that they should have uh, advertised it as such so that people know what they're buying beforehand. It's not readily uh, um, easy to tell just by looking at the cards. And as I said, it took me a month of using this deck to notice some of the oddities that I have just shared with you. So anyway, thanks for tuning in and watching with me. And uh, I am enjoying this deck more and more, much to my surprise, something that would ordinarily disturb me and perhaps make me jump online and demand a re return and a refund. I am really enjoying what this deck has to share with my subconscious. And isn't that what tarot is all about? Looking at images that stimulate your subconscious? I'll leave that to you, and I hope to see you all soon. Bye.